be back with you again here, family, and want to come talk about a little bit of what's going on in our country today and so much unrest with the racial tension and the controversy with uh, policing America. Um, how do we connect with those that we don't always understand their situations and their plights? How do we work through those sorts of things? We believe here at our church that black lives matter. Blue lives matter. White lives matter. And what we really also want is the heart of the matter. We really want to figure out what is God's heart and to get a biblical worldview on how to see things. And, and we cannot take our cues only from the news streams that we are constantly inundated with. We want to make sure that we're appealing to the highest source of all insight, of all wisdom, of all discernment to really see what is it that God would say about this. And we see this passage of scripture in Luke chapter 10, and it tells the story of the Good Samaritan. And it first starts off by saying, Gee, this is Luke chapter 10, verse 21, Jesus, who was full of joy and was in the Holy Spirit. First of all, I just have the question, what does the Son of God look like filled with the Spirit of God and full of joy? I think we need to start there. I think, first of all, we need to have the Spirit of God upon us. We need to be cloaked with the Holy Ghost and to have joy on the inside and to view it with that perspective. If we start with anger, we start with a bias, we start with preconceived ideas, or maybe we even have an unconscious bias. If we start moving in a direction already that's broken and off, we come to a really tough spot. But Jesus, who has the Holy Spirit upon him and he's full of joy, begins to address this situation. And he's asked by a keeper of the law, and this is somebody who's an extension of the temple in these days. These were the guys that were keeping the righteousness in the land um, and perhaps policing a little bit, but really just kind of the promotion of righteousness and righteous living. He says, how can we have eternal life. And Jesus comes right back to his world and he says, well, what does the law say? And he says, well, to sum it up, it's to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, and to love your neighbor as you would yourself. And this word love, we just want to focus on today. This word love, L-O-V-E. And he breaks it down basically with the Ten Commandments. The first five Ten Commandments, the first five is how to love God. The second five is how do we love one another? And he says, love is the answer. And so Jesus goes on to tell this story. He says, let me tell you the story about a man. He's walking from Jerusalem down the Jerusalem road. And this is a road that's about 17 miles long from 3,000 feet in elevation above sea level to the destination of 1,000 feet below sea level, which was just treacherous terrain where, where robbers and thieves would hide out. And if you are walking by yourself or in a small group, chances are you're going to be robbed, beaten, and left for dead. And that's what happens to this guy that Jesus tells the story of. And somebody comes walking by. He's a priest. And he walks on the other side of the road. So he would not be close to this guy. Another guy comes who's a keeper of the law. And he goes on the other side. And he doesn't want to be stopped and held. But a Samaritan man comes. And a Samaritan man looks. And when we look at the L-O-V-E, the first is L is to listen. We need to listen in on the stories of people maybe we don't fully understand that they're beaten and they're bruised and they're dinged and they're damaged. And then we go to the O, which is observe. We need to seriously just pause, not be rushing to judgment, not be opening our mouths, not be coming quickly uh, to give our two cents, but to observe. Just to take a minute, just to take in the scene of what people that we have no clue what they're going through, that we should just listen. It says, when he saw this man, he went up to him and he had pity on him. L-O-V. The V is value. Something moved in his heart when he saw this person. Just to have value. Could we say that their lives matter? That's just like a starting point. Your life matters. Your life matters. And he valued 
that person. And then it, he took him up, bandaged his wounds, put him on his own donkey, took him to an end where he gave them shekels to take care of this man. The E, L-O-V-E, is engage. And he gave them enough money to take care of this man for two months. He invested his own to take care of somebody else. There was love that came out to listen, to observe, to value, and to engage those that perhaps are nothing like us. What I also find fascinating is Jesus tells this story, and the Samaritans and the Jews, you couldn't have been farther disconnected. They just did not like each other. The Samaritans were the worst in the land. If you were going to take a dig at somebody, you would say, you are worthless, you are, you are nothing. You're like the Samaritans. And Jesus tells the story, and he makes the Samaritan the hero. He props him up as the one, the hero of the story, just offending his disciples, the religious leaders. This is offensive. And sometimes the word of God offends the mind but it reveals the heart. And Jesus is revealing the heart. He's pulling back some layers. And then Jesus likens the Samaritan unto himself. And he says, kind of the similar situation. Jesus comes in, bandages up our wounds, has pity upon us, values us, engages in our lives, takes care of us. And then he says that the Samaritan man left, but he says, I'm coming back. I'm going to come back one day. And I want to see that this man's been taken care of. And I just like to say that as Jesus is healing and binding up our wounds, can we be those as the innkeeper to take care of those that he's entrusted us to? Our fellow man. Can I just encourage us? We have one race. It's the human race. And that all are our neighbors. And that we should take care. And Jesus answers the question, how can I have eternal life? You do this. You take care of those that are around you, you have value, you engage, you love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you love your neighbor the way you would yourself. I wanna encourage us that we would just be mindful of those around, we would truly get the heart of God on the matter, that we wouldn't just drink from so many other streams and outlets and news sources, that we just become drunk on other people's opinions. We have a higher source. We have something much better to be filling our minds and our hearts. Let's have a biblical perspective and a biblical worldview on how to handle the neighbor around us. I want to encourage you, love your neighbor the same way you would yourself. This world truly can be better if we would love. Let's go do it. I believe in you.